You were trying everything to try to figure out why you were in so much pain. You had debilitating headaches, you couldn't stand the sunlight, you couldn't sleep, you were trying to go to class, you were trying to be a normal college student, and you just couldn't even function. Papa just made the decision to take you to the ER, and that's when it all began. And he called me at about three in the morning, and he said, come on down to the ER, they have found some masses in Frank's chest, um, in his lymph nodes and in his kidneys, and um, he's pretty upset. It was a very rare form of cancer, T-cell, ALL, and I remember I climbed into bed with you and I just laid with you and I just wanted to take it away from you. I didn't, I didn't want you to be in pain. And just to see you in the prime of your life at age 20, getting this death sentence. So it was not just what the chemotherapy regimen would be to start, but then also the fact that you're gonna get a pick line put in, the fact that they were going to do lumbar punctures, it was hell. There was a point in time where you just laid on the bathroom floor and just broke down and just said, I'm just, I'm in a living hell. I don't know that I can, that I can do this. One in their pride in what you have done and one in our prayers that you will return safely to Earth. When we woke you up, you were um, incoherent. You, you were um, talking um, in riddles. Papa just went ahead and put you in the car and drove you down, and they said you need to go to the ER. They'd started pumping you full of antibiotics and started pumping you full of fluids, but the problem is that they flood your body and your lungs can't take it. So it's like this domino effect. And so the strep led to septic shock, led to acute respiratory distress syndrome. It was April 24th and um, you crashed. You, you, you just crashed and your oxygen was well into the 70s and um, all hell broke loose. They were trying everything. The doctor turned to me and she said, call your family. And I said, what do you mean call my family? She said, he's not gonna last the night. Your family should come down and say goodbye. And I, I it was about one in the morning and I couldn't believe I, I was making the call. Bella and Papa and the girls jumped in the car and they ran through every red light and left the car right in front of the hospital. They didn't even park it. The um, fellow from ECMO came down and he told me again that you weren't an option. And I said, um, so what, we're just gonna sit here and watch him die? I said, if there was a 1% chance that he would live, I'd rather have that than just watching my son die. So I honestly can't believe it. They closed the doors and just walked away. I think that got back to Lena Napolitano, and Lena is the ECMO surgeon at the University of Michigan. I think when the fellow went back, and relayed our conversation, she knew that she had a family that would be willing to take the risk. And I um, showed her a picture of you. And I said, this is, this is Frankie, this is what he looks like. And it was your senior picture. And she said, oh well, my God, he's so young. And she said, and he deserves saving. After you went through the procedure and um, you survived and they had you all dialed in on all the equipment, you lost the ability to swallow. You lost the ability to move any of your limbs. You couldn't even, you didn't even have the strength to push the, the help button to call a nurse. When the physical therapist started doing physical therapy, it was a really big deal when you were just able to sit at the edge of the bed. And then she did basic things like she brought a beach ball and you threw a beach ball and you could barely, you, you lifted it, you did curls with it, like it was a 20 pound weight, but you didn't complain. When she brought those leg presses in, you, you, um, you didn't want to miss a PT session. You, you were like, let's do another, let's do another, let's do another rep. You were so motivated.
the first time you walk the entire circle, it was like a man had landed on the moon. I mean, you got a standing ovation, everybody cheered along the way. It was just, you know, absolute joy on the floor and, and celebration. And it would have been really, really easy to give up, and you didn't. And every single time, somehow you dug a little bit deeper, and you did it, and you didn't give up. 